This would be good news for farmers. I hope this would be the chance for you to take the time to plan your summer to get away from the heat. Before we move on to the talk, please turn your summer off or into silent mode. Today's topic is my life story as a Korean-American student given by today's speaker, Esther Kim. She studied science in economics and finance and had four years of a financial analyst experience working for United Health Care. Now she is going to attend Yonsei University to pursue her MBA. Let's welcome today's speaker, Esther Kim Warmly. for coming out to take the time to listen to me speak. I really appreciate it. I know everyone's busy. Um, I'm going to talk about my life as a Korean American student, um, both my experiences in America and in Korea. So the first thing I'm going to do is just introduce my family. Uh, my mother and father were both born in Seoul. Uh, my grandfather on my father's side, so Chinarabodji, was um, the apprentice to Kim Goo. He was close with him. And my dad graduated Yonsei Teakyo in the theology department, and my mother graduated Yihua Women's University from the law department. Uh, they met during college, and that's where they fell in love, and they got married in Seoul, and my oldest sister was born here. Um, after giving birth to my sister, they decided to move to the U.S. due to escalating tensions between the government and the citizens of South Korea. Um, on the right is my mother, her wedding photo here in Korea. And on the bottom is my father, the little boy, and my uh, grandmother on my father's side. So, Chin uh, This is a photo I have at my house. Photo I have at my house of uh, Kim Gu something name and my Chin uh, Haroboji. So, Uri Chin Haroboji is a very My grandfather is a person here. Another wedding photo of my mom and my father. That's my uh, grandfather. So the uh, the gentleman in the photo with Kim Goo, his older photo, and my great grandmother and my father again. And then this is my grandmother and grandfather on my mother's side. So we are the the west. I'm going to talk about my childhood. Um, so I'm the youngest of three daughter, daughters. As I mentioned earlier, my oldest sister was born here in Korea. And my middle sister and I were both born in the States. Uh, my sister first, uh, my middle sister was born in Los Angeles. My parents first emigrated to Los Angeles when they moved to the US. But they didn't like the atmosphere of California. The city was too loud, too noisy, dangerous. So they decided to move to a smaller town in Massachusetts called Amherst. And that's where I was born. And I attended elementary, middle, and high school in Amherst, Massachusetts. So the top right is a photo of my middle sister. She is um, a lawyer at SK Innovation. She lives in Seoul right now. And that's me. And below is just my older sister, my middle sister, and the baby is me. <laughs> and me again, so to order to this happened there. So I played the flute in middle and high school band, and I learned French throughout middle and high school. So at the schools that I attended, it was mandatory that all students play an instrument and learn a foreign language. So that's how I came to do that. And this photo is a picture of me in Paris. Uh, for my father's panga, uh, we gathered money, the daughters gathered money, and we took him to France because that's where he wanted to go. Uh, some trivia. So what do you think is correct? I was a ballet dancer for eight years. I played golf for eight years, or I was a soccer player for eight years. Anybody? C. C? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, this is Amher, so what do you quit? So very similar seasons to Korea, same, just Time is around 13 hours uh, later. And these are the schools that I attended. So my elementary school is the top photo, and my middle school is the bottom photo. And in my area, there's a lot of famous poets. So I don't know if anyone likes poetry, but I'm just going to read a quick poem by Robert Frost. 
Uh, he was a very famous poet from the New England area, which is where I, where I am in Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, that area. Um, so the poem is entitled The Road Not Taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and I and sorry I cannot travel both, and be one traveler. Long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, as just as fair, and having perhaps a better claim, because it was grassy and wanted bare. Though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same, and both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how many leaves on to weigh. I doubted if I should ever come back. I should be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. So for me, in a nutshell, I guess this would mean, just to elaborate on it a little bit, is just living life, you know, everyone comes to a fork in the road where you have to make a choice. And some people may find it more comfortable to take the road that a lot of people have taken. You know, you don't have to really learn anything on your own. You can hear from other people how things have gone. It might be easier. But there's those people who decide to take the harder road, maybe some something that no one's ever done. And I think that that's very important. Uh, I'm gonna talk about college and work. So I attended a very small private university in Hartford, Connecticut. Connecticut's a very small state. Um, it's called the University of Hartford, and I chose it because it wasn't too far from home, but it wasn't too close either. <laughs> so uh, I majored in economics and finance, uh, during my junior year, I had an internship at the nation's largest health insurance company uh, called United Healthcare. Uh, during my time there, I was able to work with a lot of senior level executives. I did a lot of work with the sales department. I actually, from scratch, created um, I say, a bonus generator, generator, basically, calculating percentage of their sales of how much their bonus would be. Um, and the senior level executives were really uh, impressed by my work ethic and everything that I was offered a job actually before I even graduated college. And for me, luckily, that was during the time um, around 2008-2009 when the U.S. had a very big financial downfall with the whole Wall Street incident. So I was very lucky to get a job. And I thought about it for a while because I wanted to continue my studies. I know that I always did, but I thought that maybe it would be better if I had some work experience. And it was a very prestigious company, so I accepted the offer. Um, that's just, a, the above photo is the seal of our school, and the bottom is actually the dorm, a dorm that I lived in. So, um, the top is just Howie the Hawk, uh, our mascot, and the bottom is my uh, company logo. Uh, so, how I came to Korea, uh, I was actually accepted as a Korean government scholarship scholar. Uh, it's very similar to the Fulbright. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but um, like I said, after working for four years as a financial analyst, I really decided I wanted to go back to school. And my mother actually found this on an internet website and told me about it. And um, ever since I was younger, I always wanted to learn more about my culture and my ancestors. One thing that was really hard for me growing up was that. Um, only my immediate family was with me in the U.S., so all my extended family, so I always wanted to come to Korea to learn more about everything and meet my family and be able to see my grandmother and grandparents like all the time, anytime that I wanted to. So it was kind of killing two birds with one stone. So I decided to apply, and I was actually chosen. And for the past year, I've been learning Korean at Cheonnam National University. And I will be attending Yonte in the fall to earn my MBA. So, uh, my father graduated Yonte, so he gave me his hat. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cheonnam, Cheonnam uh, is uh, my classmate. So, I've been taking Korean classes for about 10 months. I grew up learning Korean, so it hasn't been too difficult for me. But the writing is the most difficult. So for me, I had to practice, practice every day, writing a journal. And that's been very helpful for me. And just, if I talk to my parents or my sister, I always write in Korean, and they always fix it for me. 
so it's been really helpful. And I actually have classmates from all over the world, so it's been really fun actually learning with them. So if you see here, this is um, my classmate from China, uh, Cambodia, Italy, Uganda, Mexico, Pakistan, Thailand, Ethiopia, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, India, Brazil, me, and our Korean teacher. This was during a school fashion show. Uh, so my time in Gwangju, I absolutely loved it here. In all honesty, um, I didn't choose where I'd be learning Korean because it's mandatory for the scholarship if you want to continue. And they told me that I was coming here and Obviously, my parents grew up in Seoul. They've never been to Gwangju, and so they were, um, how can I say, they were teasing me that I'd come back speaking Saturi? Very good. I didn't know how to do it. But I'm really happy. Gwangju is so good. The people are so close. So I'm really thankful that I was sent here. Because if I didn't get sent here, I probably would have never came. Um, and again, I met wonderful people from all over the world here. And I've been able to volunteer, which has also made me really happy. So the above photo is me at Hainsa Temple while I volunteer. And the bottom photo is just me and some uh, friends in Seoul. <laughs> and the first stop that I made was the Yangdong Shida. And you can just see. It was really beautiful. And um, this is actually Chongpyeong Kharok my mother has a college friend that owns uh, a Hanokji, so I was able to stay here. And it was really great to experience that kind of thing, because in the States, obviously, I've never experienced living in a, in a house like this. And so I got to really get a taste of what my ancestors, how they lived, and it was just something that I, can, I can't even put into words. You know, I was just very thankful to give, be given that opportunity. Um, I volunteering, so again, I volunteer at Hansa Temple, and I genuinely love my time volunteering. Um, the children give me so much, so I went there thinking, okay, I'll teach them English, but coming out every day, you know, they teach me all the time, everything, and if I go there with a heavy heart, maybe something's bothering me, you know, I come out forgetting everything, so for that, to them, I'm really grateful for it. And I really hope that I can help them to build a bright future. You know, if a little bit of effort from me can help any anyone get a scholarship or anything like that, I'd be very happy. So the photos are just me volunteering with the children. And again, just a group shot. I actually went to the U.S. while I was volunteering, and they had never seen a gingerbread house in person. They only read the stories, so I brought one back for them, and I made it for them. And then they ate it. <laughs> um, in the U.S., I also did a lot of volunteering. Um, like I said, my father graduated the theology department, so he was a minister for most of his life. Right now, he's um, the president of the Reunification Council in our area. But he was a preacher, so I learned a lot from a young age about the importance of giving and donating your time and helping other people. And so, through the company that I worked for, United Healthcare, I was able to meet the players of the New England Patriots. I don't know if anyone knows them, but it's a football team, American football team, famous football team. And um, together we built playgrounds all over the U.S. in order to help fight childhood obesity. In the U.S., it's a you know alarmingly escalating problem that ch children are very obese. You know, there's lots of cases now of childhood diabetes, and so in order to fight that, we build playgrounds so that children can play and hopefully, you know, lose not lose weight but just be healthy. Um, the top photo is Tom Brady. He's a famous football player, and at the bottom is some uh, Patriots athletes. And on the right is actually our CFO of our company. So volunteering, you know, I like the fact that it wasn't just the lower level employees who decided to take the time out. It was actually senior level executives as well. Uh, cultural differences. Um, in all honesty, it was actually really a bit difficult for me to get used to living in Korea and in terms of cultural differences. The food, of course, I love since I was younger, my mom cooked for me. Um, 
just an example, I guess in the U.S., we're taught from an early age, you know, it's important to be polite, you know, politeness is important. And as an example, walking down the street, if you bump into someone or by mistakenly, you know, nudge them or something, it's common courtesy to stop and say, you know, excuse me, or I'm sorry. And coming to Korea, I noticed that this just isn't, not, isn't a, in existence. And at first I was really bothered by it, you know, every time it happened I would get upset. But then I realized, you know, it's just a big cultural difference. And I obviously I've understood now and it doesn't bother me anymore. Um, but one thing that I do like, which is also a cultural difference, is that on the bus or the train in Korea, you know, it's common courtesy to get up for the elderly or the, the pregnant. And in the US, that's not something that's normal unless it's it's almost like a person by person. You know, if you want to do it, you do it. In Korea it's more of a like how do I say? Unspoken kind of thing, which I really like, and I think it's good. And um, I feel very blessed to have been given this opportunity. And I feel a very deep connection to my ancestors here, and I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to learn more about my culture. And my dream. <laughs> my dream is to one day become the CEO, so the Chief Executive Officer of a corporate company, either here in Korea, I'm not sure yet, I'm still deciding. Um, and most importantly for me, through my role, I genuinely, honestly, just really want to help other people. And through philanthropy and scholarships, that's something that I really want to do. Um, especially the scholarships for students, you know, it's important to me, I think, that everyone would agree that children are our future. And I think that no child based on race, ethnicity, and especially socioeconomic status, so because they don't have money. They shouldn't be allowed to go to school or anything like that. I don't, I don't agree with things like that. So I want to be able to help children just um, build a bright future for themselves. And what I miss most. So in my hometown, it's right by the coast. So lobster is very prevalent. I noticed here in Korea it's pretty expensive. Uh, in the U.S., by my hometown, this would cost this lobster would cost like ten dollars. So. Less, mono, less than a month. <laughs> and pizza is extremely different in the US. So these two things are what's really hard for me in terms of uh, food wise. I miss it a lot. And just my message to everyone would be to never give up. Um, I believe that education and knowledge is power. And helping others is very important. And you should always follow your heart. Thank you. <laughs>